you're using a camera and you want to be sure your camera actually, the sound actually works with your camera, you need to do things in a certain order. The order is this. Join your classroom, listen for the little ding. So I'm joining my classroom. And then the last thing you need to do is plug in your camera. And this makes certain that your kids have a picture and sound instead of just a picture. And then something else I like to do sometimes is take my camera when it's work time, turn it around so that the kids can actually see their friends a little bit. <laughs> and that's kind of nice. It makes it more like a real classroom. Beautiful. Kind of to piggyback off of what Natalie was talking about with the cameras. Um, you're going to want to, as a team, probably sit in separate rooms and work on um, seeing if your cameras are going to work. So have a different person set up a Google Meet and then have everybody else join it and um, plug in their cameras after to make sure you can all hear each other because you don't want that to be um, practicing on the very first day you're teaching. When you are chatting with your class, please make sure that all distance kids silence themselves. They have their cameras on, but they are muted. When it's somebody's turn to talk online, make sure they raise their hand and then tell them, I'll be with you in a second. They unmute themselves and then you can continue to teach, answer some in-class kids questions and then come back to them and answer their question. Otherwise you will have delays in your teaching and awkward pauses and silences. And then as soon as their question is answered, go ahead and tell them to make sure they're muting themselves again. We've also had a few instances where somehow our cameras get muted from our end and the students cannot hear us. So you can do a few different things with that. One is to have a very responsible student maybe in the front kind of check and peek to see and have people on camera giving them a thumbs up or that you check every once in a while to make sure that they can hear you. Um, that way they don't miss anything and you don't have to re redo any of the teaching. All right, hey folks, um, homework. You can, I'm gonna talk about homework. You can either bookmark the homework page to their Chromebooks because I looked on the Delano website and it looked like all grades have the homework website there, but for easier access, you can book it, bookmark it to their Chromebooks now when they're in school. And then um, scheduling or schedules to help them know what time they have each class. You can either, a couple ideas here is you can either make a topic in Google Classroom that says schedule and post a schedule there, that way it's always there. Or you could list the times of each class next to the class name in Google Classroom like this. So in Google Classroom, each class would have the time and the class name next to it. So the students will be able to know that way. That's it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to set up a Meet link for your students. So basically just get to your main Google Classroom page. Um, you have to set up a separate link for each class that you have. So if I were to go into my language arts period one class, when you pull this up, the students actually cannot see the link that you can see here. Um, theirs would just be the title, the time, and the, I don't even think the class code shows up. Um, but I have a I with a slash through it, which means the students have nothing visible to them at this time. So in order to make it visible, you go over to the settings, you click on the settings, you scroll down to where it says meet visible to students. If you click that over and it becomes, then it becomes visible to the students, then you click save. And then what happens is it will show up with the camera option available, which means your link is active and ready to go. What I would suggest, as soon as you set up the Meet link, you click in there to get on it. Because if a student gets on there before you do, they own the link if you're recording, not you. So join, you join it now as soon as you can. It joins it. You turn off your camera, you turn off your microphone. Oh, it's just doing that because I'm on my desktop. And then it will show up. Okay, and then to get it off, at the end of your class, you go back here, you click visible to students. So it's not visible to students, you click save. And then 
Now it's not visible to students. You know it's not visible because the eye has a slash through it. And even if you hover over it, it says not visible to students. One other thing I want to show you guys is that I figured out because sometimes kids like to comment on the stream and that can be... Annoying. Uh, yeah, annoying. <laughs> So if you go to where it says stream right here in settings, if you click that down, drop down menu, by default, it's on students can post and comment. You wanna change it to only teachers can post or comment. I've already have it saved and then click save because that way only you are posting or commenting on the stream and students cannot. Okay, I hope that helps, cheers. All right, um, this is what we found works for us. Uh, what we do to make sure that we can put anything that's a PDF uh, or an actual paper copy into the classroom and send it to students. Um, I would imagine most staff would know how to do this, but if not, uh, uh, here it is. Uh, you can scan on both uh, upstairs can printer and downstairs printer, and it's basically just an email. So your number or your your email should be saved in there. So once you scan it, it comes to you like this. Uh, you simply just add it to your drive, and when you add it to your drive, you want to change the name so that you can remember what it is. And it's right here. You right click on it, change, uh, and rename it so that you can access it again. Uh, I'm just going to put test so that I remember. Um, and then when you go through um, and scan, be sure to know that if you want to scan something that's horizontal, you need to change the way the paper location is, or you just scan like a, num uh, a normal uh, paper. Um, if you scan a whole bunch, it's going to come up in one single email, so just make sure you look all the way down to show where your uh, each individual scan is. It saves to drive, save it and change your name. And then when you open up your classroom and you want to assign a, an assignment, I'm sure all of you know this, I'm going to simply pull from my Google Drive and it generally is one of the first things on your recent and I'm just simply going to click that and it's already there. For a PDF for what we have found works for us. We do not make a copy for each student. We simply let them use Kami, and the moment they open up and use with Kami, it makes its individual copy. Um, if it is a doc that you just want to share with them that you've created, then you want to make a copy for each student. Um, keep in mind, Monica just sent out this awesome resource. I haven't looked a ton about it, but it's exactly what we're doing for changing over PDFs to a a student copy is called teacher made it's in the last email that she just sent out good luck everybody okay I'm going to show you how to um, teach Cami to your students so you can turn a PDF into an edible document um, so I don't always know how to get to the Chrome store so I just come down here and go Chrome store because that's my brain and then up here I just type Cami and it is this first one all students need to add this extension to their Chromebook once you have the Cami on there you will see this little K up here is Cami PDF and document annotation so then that is there it's on their computer okay so if I were to go in classroom and if I were to click on something that I scanned um, and put in there, I want the students at home to be able to write on this. One important little bit of information is if it's a document, if it's a doc, always make sure, it's not here right now because it's already on there, but it's going to say make a copy for each student. If it's a document, make a copy for each student, always. If it's a PDF, don't do that, okay? Then they will be, they will open this up you will see this, if they have Cami on their Chromebook, this little drop down, or it says it right here, but this little drop down says open with Cami. You choose annotate with Cami. It'll populate a Cami screen for the students. They will then be able to type on it. There's a text box. They can highlight. Don't ever use yellow. <laughs> you can't see it, okay? But you can highlight, well, that's, well yeah. So you can highlight stuff.
step, move stuff around. But the first thing to do is have a student, when they open it up, have them pretend like they're going to type on it, and then it will ask them if they want to make their own copy. Yes, they want to <laughs> make their own copy, and then their name will be up here in the blue. So to say like, Teresa Campbell's whatever. Make sure their name is up here before they start typing and correcting on it, okay? Because then it's their copy of it. Then when they're done, there's two different ways they can do it. They can save, and it will export everything to a Kami export folder, and then they attach it to their classroom from that folder. If that doesn't work because nothing is ever 100%, if it doesn't work, have them download it to their Google Drive with annotations, begin the export, cool. such as life. <laughs> it will be in their drive, they find that copy and attach it to the assignment in their classroom. It'll say add or create, they attach the completed one, they attach it and turn it in. 